It was done, there were six setups on this before. It was a tremendous amount of time. So once we had got the new five axis, we programmed it there and it cut the time down by about four hours. Look at the wide array of, of components here. We're going to be talking about these. We're here at Mass Precision Engineering in Cork, Ireland, which is the home of medical electronics. Loads of high-tech stuff happening in this area. And here at Mass, Dale, you're making all of these components. They look really different. Are they for different applications, different products? No, this is what, for one particular application. These parts are made for an ROV, which is used to disarm suspicious packages. And as you can see, this part here is part of the turret. That's the base plate that sits above the turret that turns like that. This part is mounted on there, which holds the arms, which is made up in three sections, which is two meters long. Wow, so you've almost got enough parts here to assemble a full robot on site. That's amazing. Almost set for the main body and the tracks. And you need all the electronics and the motors as well, I guess. But maybe we'll be seeing a few robots running around the facility soon. Um, but what I love is, um, is the fact that this robot is made mostly in-house. All of these aluminium parts are made at mass. But yes. First of all, could you explain to people what does ROV actually stand for? Robotic Operated Vehicle. Okay, so that's, these are manually operated robots. Um, which do loads of different tasks that uh, would otherwise would be quite dangerous for humans. Um, and maybe you want a robot to be doing those jobs instead. Now, yeah. let's talk about this component here. Now, what is this component? This component here is the lower arm, which mounts onto the housing here. And as you can see, it's shelled out for lightness. Yeah, look at these beautiful weight-saving pockets here. So this is a lower arm. Are there multiple arms? There's multiple arms. It comes in three sections. You get the lower, the mid arm, which has a dog leg, and then the upper arm, which is the straight section, which you can see here. Okay, so we've got a straight section here as well. And these yeah. must be really long. The, the total arm length must be huge. The total length is approximately two meters. I think that's excluding the wrist and the gripper arms. Right, okay, so these must be big robots. They're not like some little toy robot, are they? I wouldn't say they're big robots because they need to be handled. So the, the actual chassis of the robot is quite small. It's just that they can compact and fold into one another. So the existing length of the, of the robot is probably about, I would say, five to six hundred millimeters long. Okay, fair enough. But the, but the arms can reach so far so they can get into difficult situations, into difficult areas, and extract whatever they need to extract, or even yeah. they're used, in, they're used in, in fire situations as well for they, safety. Yeah. They, now, if we look at the component, um, I mean, the weight saving pockets, surely those tolerances aren't too tight. Are there any tight tolerances on the component? The tight tolerances mainly would be for the bearings and the gears, because the, the, main, the main bearing holds the main gear and you have the worm gear here. So they got to be pretty accurate and then you would have your, your motor housing here which drives your worm gear. Oh, okay, so those, those tolerances need to be pretty accurate for the, the gears to mesh properly. Must be, yeah. And if you see the, the components, they do fit together and as they like a shell. Yeah. And then how do you actually make the parts and how do you ensure that the two balls are accurate to each other on each component? Okay, so what we do, that would be the second operation as you see there. Then what we do then is we, we assemble them together and then we machine them. The two balls either the side two balls in situ either side. to make sure that it's So they are making component, yeah. Okay, fantastic. I absolutely love it. So these components are absolutely lovely, absolutely fantastic, and there's, there's, there's a huge range of different types, but they all are like five axis components to me. Now, which of these, if I was gonna guess, I'd say five axis? Yeah, this part would be a five axis. As you can see there, it's, there's five different sections that are gonna be machined, and that all gets done on one, one uh, machine. Uh, as you can see there as well, that's a negative angle, and we can do that on the trunnion there on that five axis. Brilliant. And without the ne negative angle, I mean, would it take an extra operation? That would take an extra operation, yeah. Absolutely. You would have to make a fixture to get that angle. Yeah. So fortunately, on the Herco, we can get that angle done. I love it. So here at Mass, there's, there's a good number of VMCs here, and they all happen to be Hercos. Yeah. Um, there's three axis and five axis machines. When would you consider using one of the five axis machines you've got here over a standard three axis for a kind of a two-sided job? 
A lot of the parts are done on the five axis. As you can see, this component has various operations. Yeah, there must be so many setups if you're going to do that on a three axis machine. It was done, there were six setups on this before. It was a tremendous amount of time. So once we had got the new five axis, we programmed it there and it cut the time down by about four hours. Thank you so much, Dale. And I don't think I've seen so many fascinating components all made on Hercos here at Mass. Thank you.